a review of the Knit Picks Ball Winder. This is a great little ball winder. Uh, it does up four ounces, which is about 100 grams, I think. I'm not totally sure. You'd probably know better than me, but I know that it totally does our balls of 100 grams. Um, this turns into this, which is pretty great. Uh, you, so when I get set up, I have scissors nearby and I also keep a crochet hook. So just make sure those are within reach and then you're going to get your ball ready. So what I do, I keep a drawer in my desk down like the lowest drawer, not empty of course, but an empty at the, bin, at the front part enough so the ball can sit inside and kind of bounce around. Um, I used to keep a basket, like a bucket, storage bucket, storage container, I suppose, down on the ground until I figured out I could just pull out a drawer. So it's easier to keep a drawer. So start by getting your ball ready. So you take off your wrapper and find the little piece that they've thrown inside, or this one they just wrapped around. That's nice of them. And then, so the outside yarn, I just wrap around the outside just loosely and I kind of poke the tail under because you don't want it twisting up with the other one and becoming like a tangle. And then you have to find the inside of your yarn which might be an issue but we will find out. Oh that was pretty good. Okay so now you have your yarn coming out from the center. You can do from the outside, but it really bounces around a lot and it's harder on your hand and it messes up your tension because it goes tight and loose and tight and loose and tight and loose. So the small ball winders, they're all pretty much the same, although this I think is the nicest one because it has um, all the gears are covered up underneath. There's no, like they're not exposed and it's not ugly colors. So we like that. It's really cute. It's a little bit more than the ugly color ones, but it's not ugly color, so clearly it's worth it. Um, and it's a cute brand. I mean, everything about it's super cute. So it has one of these arms to feed the yarn through. So you can just put uh, your yarn through and twist it like that, and it'll go through. Or you can just put it through like a needle like so. Either way, whatever you're comfortable with. Then it has two slits at the top of the cone to put the yarn through and that holds it, uh, that holds the tail up so you know like to make the center, the center pull. So this tail will be the center pull of your yarn cake. So I put it through and pull it down firmly. I leave about a one inch tail. I don't leave too much. It gets stuck underneath um, all the yarn cake and then it's hard when you're pulling out you don't know, like you kind of lose where it is. Like you might pull this side instead of that side. So I keep a pretty short tail. I know some people make a knot on their on their tail and then make it even shorter. I just pretty much put it in as tight as I can and start going slowly. And there we are. In the beginning, the yarn is it keeps pulling up like that which is why it's good if it's in a drawer because you have more space to um, pull it or to keep, yeah, to get the yarn out. But eventually gravity helps you and the yarn will start coming freely. Almost there. Yeah. And then you just wind like that. Now it's coming nicely, so we can wind at a good pace. And you can see the yarn cake is starting. You're keeping a bit of tension on your, uh, like in your hand with the yarn, so you can feel any knots or breaks. If there is a knot or break, you get your little scissors out and cut it into two pieces, and you'd finish this yarn cake and start another yarn cake with what's left. Then you know whatever you have, all your yarn cakes don't have any knots. 
but I don't know if we're going to get one. Let's see. starts getting lacy, loopy lacy like this, like holes in it, you kind of slow down so that gravity helps you again because it'll start jumping up to your hand. But if you give it time, it'll stay down if you go slow enough. There we go. Oop. Get that undone. Little snaggle. There we are. Okay, so that was a totally good skein as well. Yay us. So then I take my little crochet hook, whatever size you have handy, but something small, and I loop it under into my yarn cake, grab my tail and pull it through just so it still looks cute and is woven in. Now you take your top part and you find your tail which is there and if you can take your label and fold your label up like roll it up into a little a little tube like so and put it on top of your cone in this little space and take your tail and hold it with your tail and then slide your yarn cake off of the ball winder and just leave it inside there and pull it up. So then you can see you have your label inside your yarn cake with all your yarn information, your dye lot and all that and your tail is ready to go, it's right there. And then when you, you want to use your cake you just take out your label and you start using your cake. It comes out just perfectly from the center. So you can make them center, well they're all going to be center pull, but you can use the yarn from the center if, you're go if you think you're going to be using the whole cake. Um, if you're just doing a little bit of it, like you're just using some yarn, then I would go from the outside just so that your cake doesn't, um, it'll last longer without having to be rewound. Re because uh, it'll get it gets the hole in the center gets bigger and bigger and bigger like a donut and it starts collapsing on itself. I had some here like that, but I've moved them part of my temperature blanket that I've been going mad at. So um, and if you have two, if you have a, a knot in your skein, you can just make two cakes and then you know that a smaller project you take a smaller ball, uh, a smaller yarn cake. A larger project you take a bigger one. It totally works out. Um, I used to think, oh no, look, I, have, I don't have a perfect cake, but now I find myself, I'll just go, if I'm making granny squares or something, I'll go and I'll take all my small cakes and go and make my granny squares, and I don't feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm wasting a big cake. Um, and if I'm doing a blanket or something big, I take a big cake, and then I know I don't have any knots. So, it's a totally great thing, and this little one from Knit Picks, it works a treat. Um, I'll be doing another video comparing the big one to the small one. Um, pros and cons of both because I didn't know and I couldn't find any information about it so I ended up buying both. Um, I'm glad I did. They're both really great little machines so you can look for that in the future. And I hope you like this video. If you did please like and share and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay hooked.